the ultimate goal in life is to kind of be the best athlete I can be, be the best person I can be and just to kind of live without any regret because ultimately that makes you the happiest person that you can be and in a life that is short, like that's all you can ever ask for is to be the happiest and smiliest and least regretful person that you are. My name is George Peasgood and I'm British paratriathlete. Childhood shaped my life uh, pretty drastically. Like everything that I did growing up has kind of shaped who I am today. Um, as it stands, my impairment is that I have only 20 degrees, so imagine this is my leg, this is my foot. I only have 20 degree plantar flexion, so movement that way from neutral. I have no inversion, eversion, and my left leg is two centimeters longer than my right. Um, basically, it all came about when I was two and a half years old, I had an accident with a ride-on lawnmower, which basically just meant my my left ankle, which went underneath, was pretty cut up and battered. Um, I had quite a few plastic surgeries and surgeries just kind of to clean up the mess that was there. Um, and I, from that point, I kind of grew up quite normal in terms of my, my feet and my legs. Um, but it was noticed that my left leg was growing a lot a lot slower than my right leg. Uh, so I had a leg lengthening operation that then made my left leg too long. And because my leg and foot were growing slower, my foot is also uh, four shoe sizes smaller than my right. I started triathlon in 2010. Um, after a leg length operation, um, just joining the junior tri club back at um, Saffron Walden, um, and it all kind of snowballed from there. The point I realised I could kind of become a professional was probably around 2014. So was, that was the year kind of we found out the classifications for Rio and kind of that's when I, I really started to pick things up and kind of take things a bit more seriously with, with triathlon and aiming for the games. Training in lockdown has actually been pretty good. Um, I always feel kind of bad saying that it's been good, but it has been. Um, Without having access to the pool, or the gym, and my team physio, like I moved back home for the for, for six weeks, two months, and kind of just really focused on my run training. Um, my mum's a private physio, which kind of helped with that aspect and kind of kept me in good nick as well. Um, but yeah, it really allowed me a chance to focus on my running, and kind of the evidence has been yeah shown that it has really helped. With the likes of social media and things these days, it's, it's so easy to for people to be in awe of athletes and the amount of things and places we get to go and see and train and everything, but ultimately training is actually quite hard. Um, and especially when you take, take away the nice scenery on a bike ride or a run or something, then you can ultimately be in quite a mentally tough place. Struggles in races, I had two in particular in 2019. Um, one of them was World Champs in Lausanne, um, where I got a one minute drafting penalty. Um, the second one was actually three weeks later, getting a getting a puncture on the bike in, at the European Champs. Both of them were pretty big races in terms of qualifying uh, for Tokyo and securing some good points. So mentally, I didn't cope with them well at all. I lost my head in both of them. The um, two or three weeks kind of around both of them races were pretty tough um, to yeah to get a one minute drafting penalty when I didn't think that that was justified at all was was really tough especially when you know it's going to be the biggest kind of point scorer in a Tokyo or a Paralympic um, qualification period I lost my head and I run run the slowest I have in probably four five years or so um, so yeah I didn't deal with it really. Like after the race I 
like all the emotions kind of hit and just kind of had to take myself away from the situation. It was actually really nice. Our performance director, Mike, was there at the finish line and he kind of just spoke to me while the, the um, emotions were quite raw and he kind of said to me, don't like, don't worry, it's absolutely fine. We can get around this and like qualification is still on. Um, I should still be going to the games and kind of from a funding perspective as well, kind of reassured me that the few weeks before, prior, um, we were at the test event where I medalled in Tokyo. Um, and that was the A race of the year ultimately, um, to learn to try and deliver in 36 degree heat in Tokyo after the time differences and everything. And that's the one thing I did. Within triathlon, um, I want to be a Paralympic gold medalist. Ultimately, that, that's what I do, that's what I love, that's why I race. Down the line, I do want to compete in able-bodied triathlon races. I want to race at a European or World Cup or as, as high as I can um, and kind of show where uh, where I can race and where my abilities are that para-athletes aren't just a separate sport and we're not as good. I want to show that we actually can race at an able-bodied level as well. My name is George Peasgood and I'm British paratriathlete. Hi mum. <laughs> I'm right, thing, I'm just doing an interview with ATE. Can I call you later? Alright, love you, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>